sweet pool of light. Uh. Oh, should I should have kept that gym membership. You see those lights? That's the elevator we need to take. open. Oh, should I should have kept that gym membership. Wait, call the elevator. I'm keeping watch. I think I hear something moving around. Almost there. There's an entrance into the dam at the top. What's the plan, Wake? Well, Weaver's crazy, but she's got something Zane left behind. Something to fix this. Gee, could you be a little more vague? Thomas? Zane? Seriously? Might as well be Paul Bunyan or Bigfoot. Yeah, well, he was real. Let's be careful, okay? Jeez, I hate this. Okay, Wake. There's a button over there that opens the door. I think something's broken. Hold the button down so we can get in. now. I'll have to make it alone through the top. Okay, wait. Good luck. Don't get yourself killed. Ow! 
Please be careful. I'll take good care of Barry Wake. You just look after yourself. You gotta be kidding me. Thomas Zane knew he had to remove all that had made this horror possible, including himself. That was the only way to banish the dark presence he had unleashed and now looked at him through the eyes of his dead love. But he also knew that despite his best efforts, it might someday return. So even as he wrote himself and his work out of existence, he added a loophole as insurance, an exception to the rule. Anything of his stored in a shoebox would remain. outnumbered. The searchlight could even the odds.
foolish chance to take. Don't worry about the noise. We're safe here. I have looked after the well-lit room for many, many years now. There is no shadow in the well-lit room. The power is fail-safe, and all of the bulbs are numbered and changed regularly based on their make and model. Right. during the Second World War. They operated here back then. They must have built this. Yes, they did. It's my place now. Six and thirty-three and one eighteen need changing soon, and I don't want to climb up the ladder to change them because it's very late and I'm tired. And if you take it, I won't have to do that anymore. The page was autobiographical, a memory from my childhood. But I didn't write this. It was a page written by Thomas Zane. None of them were supposed to exist anymore. Alan, seven years old, would fight sleep to the bitter end. When he did sleep, he soon woke up, screaming, the nightmares fresh in his mind. One evening, his mother, sitting by his bed, offered him an old light switch. She called it the clicker, and flicking the switch would turn on a magical light that would drive the beast away. To imbue the talisman with all possible power, she added that it had been given to her by Alan's father. Alan never knew him, and anything of his took on mythical proportions in his mind. With the clicker firmly in his hand, Alan finally slept like a baby. Now, almost 30 years later, Alan thought of this as he stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, the clicker in his hand. He took a deep breath and jumped. My mind swirled. I'd given the clicker to Alice, yet it was here. Zane had written it into existence in a story I had written. I can get to her now. I can finish this. Previously on Alan Wake, I wrote a horror story that has come true. Thomas Zane did the same in the 70s. You will go no further. If I continue like the Dark Presence wants me to, the story I'm writing won't save Alice. It's a horror story. No one will survive. You knew Zane! Thomas Zane! You're the Lady of the Light in the song! He left something behind to help me. The clicker. Alan thought of this as he stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, the clicker in his hand. He took a deep breath and jumped. I can get to her now. I can finish this. explode and the light hurt my eyes. I needed my sunglasses and painkillers to dull the pain. In one of my finer moments of self-deception, I swore to quit drinking. Ugh. The sunglasses made the world look bearable. Now I could keep my eyes open without feeling like a vampire in the sun. I wasn't sure I'd make it out there without some painkillers. The pills worked fast. The prospect of being awake started to seem bearable again. There was a message waiting for me on the machine.
Wakey, wakey! You should have your show on your TiVo. If Alice wasn't too mad to record it, that she called me earlier and really chewed me out. Yeah, yeah, we went a little overboard last night. But parties are a part of this business. Al, look, I'm saying this is your friend. She's not doing your career any favors by trying to run your life like that, okay? I'll talk to you later, Al. Watch the show! I'd been a guest on the talk show the previous night, talking about my latest book. The show was supposed to be waiting for me on our TiVo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Harry Gallick Show. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We have a great show tonight. I've been talking with the best-selling author, Alan Wake, about his new book, The Sudden Stop. Yeah, good read. Go buy it. No, no, it is a good read. Look, uh, I'm gonna be honest here. Is that wise? No, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I got people who give me the lowdown on books. I'm a busy guy. But this one, I actually read from cover to cover. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan. Wow, thanks. Hey, now, honey. This might be a Did you watch the show? Who haven't read I didn't say anything yet. stupid Based if that's what you want to know. Okay, grumpy. You want an aspirin yet. or something? <laughs> Are you gonna start with me about drinking now? You know what? Go back to sleep, Alan. The main the... What? Now you can't even talk to me? Well, this morning I was angry because you said you'd be home at midnight and you showed up at 7 a.m. and passed out in mid-sentence. Now I'm over it. Are you angry? This goddamn tour. It's gotten out of hand. Oh, honey. It's almost over, right? We can get back to normal. Then you can start writing again. I'm sorry, honey. Alan, you're not thinking straight. Just take a shower and go back to bed, huh? Yeah, you're right, honey. I'm sorry. Once this is over, let's go away together. A vacation. Just you and me. Some peace and quiet. Somehow, the clicker was the key to the cabin. I had to return to Cauldron Lake to save Alice. I'm going back to the lake to finish this. I'm going to write an ending to the story in the manuscript on my own terms, to make it all right. Why can't you just write it here? The last page is still in the typewriter. I need to read it first. Everything needs to be just right. Zane tried to cut some corners, and it didn't end well. Okay, ready when you are. I'm sorry, Sarah, but I need to do this alone. Barry, take her gun. Miss Weaver, close the door when I leave. Good luck, Al. See you later. Sunny. I had flicked the switch of the clicker. Had it done this? I didn't stop to question it. I had to take advantage of the sunlight to get to the lake. On Zane's page, I had stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, about to use the clicker. That's where I was headed. surrounded by the beauty of the Pacific Northwest landscape. It was hard not to let doubt creep in one last time. I could still chalk everything up to a dream, a delusion. I had enough imagination to make up something like this, having been in the cabin all this time, trapped in a story inside my head, gone mad from grief over Alice's death like Hartman had claimed. There would be no way of knowing. I told myself it didn't really matter. My course was set.
a link between us, always would be. I could feel its presence again, getting closer. The Dark Presence was no longer trying to capture the Rider so he could create the ending it wanted. The Rider knew too much, he was too strong, and he carried a weapon left behind by Thomas Zane, something that could hurt it. Now, the Darkness was doing everything in its power to simply stop the Rider from ever reaching Cauldron Lake and the dark place it came from. This had obviously been the room where Agent Nightingale had stayed when he hadn't been busy harassing me.
Look after yourself and your co-workers! You could have fooled me. Based on the signature in the motel register, Agent Nightingale had stayed here, in room number two.